Hey everybody, Bryce Kuhn here as we get another episode of The Crowded Booth. In today's show, we're talking about, do the Braves have another dynasty ahead of them? Matt Olson trade, the extension, the key signings. Alex Anthopoulos is playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. We're going to talk about that today here on The Crowded Booth. How in here and make yourself feel at home. Coming on the crowded booth with Bryce Coon. Hey, everybody, Bryce Coon and Ralph Leary on another great episode of the crowded booth. You're doing great things as well. You too, Ralph. But the people watching, the most highly viewed video of the past two weeks was our episode talking about Matt Olson, the rapid reaction. Today, we're going to continue it because, Ralph, one of the big things we've talked a lot about is it's baseball season. Well, our probably our favorite sport, college football is up there. But when you get springtime, baseball, we all know where we're from here in Columbus, Georgia. We love, we love to talk about our Atlanta Braves, the 2021 World Series champs. Ralph, do you see this right here? World Series awesome. champs. Also, what'd you think of the pullover? We got lunch today, Ralph. You didn't even say anything about it. Oh, I meant to say it to you actually. I was like, I really the pullover is, is clean. It looks it's good. clean. It's clean. I got the, I got the haircut. I mean, I'm I'm doing well. Man, you look you look great, dude. I appreciate. Sorry, it. I'm not on par with you today, but it's okay. <laughs> That's okay. The hair looks I good. I wear the almost pullover today. So. That's okay. Hey, this is the crowded booth. If you're listening on radio throughout East Alabama and West Georgia, you're wondering what in the world we're talking about. Well, go to YouTube. Check us out. Those episodes are dropping. We've had some great content, some good interviews coming up as well. We had a great friend on and Sam Beatty. I think he's going to be more involved because we created a new group chat. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're talking with uh, – and he was great. And, you know, let's just start the show off with the fact that Sam Beatty dropped two Instagram-worthy clips. The one that we posted came into fruition. Ralph, is is Sam Beatty looking into his crystal ball and predicting what's going on? Because he literally said he feels good about it. He said, I think Matt Olson's going to get an extension. And lo and behold, less than 24 hours after we dropped the episode, Matt Olson signs the largest extension in Atlanta Braves history, the largest contract Eight years, one sixty-eight. What What are you thinking, my friend? I mean, First off, about Sam Beatty. I mean, Sam Beatty's awesome. I mean, the the, the lettuce is there, dudes. Uh, he just needs better internet. Um, that's all it is. I mean, he's running yeah. his uh, internet on a hamster wheel. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Sam was awesome. I mean, he was he was spot on with his takes, and everything was everything hit. You know, obviously with the extension yesterday morning, um, it was it came out real quick. You know, there was. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got off the plane. AA hit him with a phone call saying, "Hey, you want to sign your extension now? Because before your press conference, yeah, you know, you, you'll you'll be here in about thirty minutes. Let's get this deal done." And I think he got it done about fifteen minutes. And Alex Anthopoulos, I mean, I'm already gonna say I, he should have won it last year, but executive of the year yeah. already to go. I said it in our intro. Alex Anthopoulos is playing chess. Everyone else is playing checkers. Now let's we're gonna divvy this show and episode up into kind of three different parts. Ralph, first mm-hmm. off. And by the time this releases, there could be a new move. That's how quickly he's moving. Oh, yeah. The trade, a lot of people were kind of nervous, and we talked about it on Tuesday's episode or Monday's episode earlier in the week. When Matt Olson, when the trade was down, you said, oh, they're giving up a lot. The key was, Ralph, is someone had to know, and there had to be some kind of talking about the fact that they thought they could get an extension done. And Thopolis felt well good about it, obviously, with Olson just getting married last fall and him and his wife buying a house in Atlanta within the perimeter. So they kind of knew all those details going in. Now, Ralph, the thing for me is this deal looks even better. You've got a legitimate elite first baseman locked up till he's 35. The championship window's wide open. What do you make of this extension? Let's just talk about that and then kind of go into the conversation. We'll go about, well, why couldn't you sign Freddie for that? But first off, what did you think about the ability just to extend Olsen? And does that make you feel better about what you gave up in the deal? Oh, yeah. I mean – uh, I would expect the Braves to kind of wait a year, let him play for a year and see how he does in Atlanta, and then, you know, send him after next year. Or, you know, if they didn't like him, just let his contract run out. We go we do something else. But, you know, Anthopoulos is a master at his craft. I mean, one of the best in the game. Uh, and to all the fans who don't like Alex Anthopoulos, you're crazy. You're you're not listening to baseball. You don't understand what he does. It's, you know, Bryce said it best. He's playing chess while everyone else plays checkers. I mean, we go back to you know this past year, down at Cunha, down Darno, and you're you know, you're down some starting pitchings and kind of banged up. What's Alex Anthopoulos do? 
he's going to rebuild the outfield in, different, in four different positions mm-hmm. and lead us to a World Series. I mean, it, without Alex Anthopoulos and what he's done, the Braves wouldn't be where they are today. But with yeah. Matt Olson signing, though, that right there shows you how aggressive they wanted Matt Olson. They really did. Once mm-hmm. this talk started up, they said, you know, if Freddie is not coming back, this is who, we're, who we want to get. And, you know, I think they pulled the trigger at the right time. And Ralph, I think too, you mentioned it, how aggressive they were to go get Matt Olson. That's what kind of opposing GM said. Buster only talked about it in a podcast interview that he talked with opposing GMs and said, this is something that the other same teams were like, that's aggressive. And then you lock him up. And Ralph, let's talk about that. Eight years, I think it was 168 million. I think that was the number. I mean, Ralph, this is a thing that you get a guy that gets a pay increase, but you keep him at a level where – <laughs> the joke's been used before, financial flexibility. And Alex Anthopoulos knows how to use it, Ralph. He used it well in this situation. And I want to talk about this because there's been a lot of talk of, well, why, Bryce, and why, Ralph, is why couldn't they do this with Freddie Freeman? Well, one, he's 27. He's, he'll turn 28 next week or next month in the coming weeks. Come on. Yeah. You, you literally have him for his prime window. Like, you you have Matt Olson locked up. You don't have to worry about him. And so now you can focus it on guys like Dansby Swanson, Austin Riley going forward, maybe Max Freed if you want to. You can you can take that money and do elsewhere with it, Ralph. I'm telling you, Alex and Thompson, so we talked about this on the earlier episode of the week. I'm going to trust the guy. And you pointed out right there. I mean, until he proves – and I, I tweeted out, and I'll say this, shout out to the people who follow me on Twitter, because I don't know if you've noticed, Ralph, I've gotten a lot of attention off of these Braves tweets I've been putting out there, which is a ton of fun, because we love talking about the Braves. But I said, listen, Twitter GMs, you don't know anything. YouTube GMs, you don't know anything. Facebook Live, Twitch, you know, Mixer GMs, you don't know anything, Ralph. Mixer's not a thing anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's okay. You don't know anything, Alex Anthopoulos does, that's why he has the job. And I'll say this, about 95, I'll even say 99% of people on social media, if they were the GMs, they would run the team straight into the ground. Alex Anthopoulos has done a great job with this, and I think that the extension's great. You couldn't do that for Freeman because, Ralph, here's an interesting thing for you, and then I'll let you take it. The last time we saw this situation with a former MVP coming off a World Series that hit free agency the team didn't sign him back was the St. Louis Cardinals in 2011 with Albert Pujols. Mm-hmm. I love Albert Pujols. Cardinal fans adored Albert Pujols, Ralph. But the fact of the matter is, is it that deal that the Angels signed him to? He broke down. I don't think that Freddie's going to break down like that. But man, you extended the championship window with this extension, and I just think it was the right business move emotionally. You and I were talking right before we came on today's show. We saw the post that Freddie Freeman put out there. You've sent me some TikToks that get a little emotional. You watch his mm-hmm. career highlights. But business-wise, Ralph, and I'm going to tell you, April 7th, I'm going to be tuned in because this team is unbelievable. We're going to talk about some more moves after the commercial break, but I just go back to it. Business-wise, this was the best move. And then for you to lock him up, I think the Braves made some key, key moves for their future. Yeah, I mean, go back to what you said about Albert Pujols, a former MVP coming off a World Series, and they don't, they don't really resign him. You don't have to always resign your best player. Now, mm. what Alex Anthopoulos does best is he divvies up that cash and gives the players who deserve the most. I mean, obviously, Ronald Acuna is one of the best players in baseball. Now, obviously, he's making some, he's making good money, but he's not making what Fernando Tatis is making. But who has a World Series championship ring? You know, Tatis will miss the first three months of the season because he's being an idiot and having motorcycle accidents over and over again. He's making four. He's paying. He's for fourteen years, three hundred forty million dollars. If you take Ronald Acuna's contract, Ozzy Albie's contract, and Matt Olson's contracts. They still are under that pay right there. Yeah. Alex Anthopoulos has taken his the money the Braves have and divvied it up perfectly where we're not overpaying anybody. We're getting our we're giving them the money's worth of what they what they're able to do. And they love it there. Mm-hmm. They're, they're treated well in Atlanta. They are they're welcome to the open arms always. Ronald Cunha, a fan favorite throughout the league. Ozzy Albies, a fan favorite throughout the league. I mean, if you watch any game or Ozzy Albies is before pregame. Yeah, just watch his reactions and how he interacts with fans. He's a, he's a happy person, and that's just how the Braves are. And I feel like that's what you know, no one really hates the Braves. And I say it because you know there's, there's Mets fans, Phillies fans, all those hate the Braves, and probably not Astros fans. But who cares? Because we yeah. have the World Series and you don't. Um, but you know, it's like Alex Anthopoulos has got a, a group of guys that that work well and gel together very well. Matt Olson already clicking with these guys. Danger Swanson announced that he you know. 
we were about we were gonna be roommates our freshman year at Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. you know, we were we were best friends growing up, and we knew each other playing baseball. So it's good to have him here. So Alex Anthopoulos once again has taken his reins of power and 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 just masterminded the way roster here. He he maximized where this team is. And I think if you want to go back, blame Liberty Media. Alex Anthopoulos has done exactly what he was brought on this staff to do. Um, I think it's amazing to see what he's done and and just building this team and kind of taking that next step. And Ralph, we're going to talk about a couple key moves that I think are just fantastic. They were made after the Olsen signing and the extension, and then obviously on Wednesday as well. But I want to leave, before we go to break, the best quote is we kind of in the discussion about Freddie Freeman versus Matt Olson, which Dansby Swanson had a great quote. I put it on Twitter, but let's watch it right here. It's fine to feel two different things at once. Um, obviously, uh, part of me is really excited for, for Matt to be here. Um, you know, we have a, a little bit of a history. You know, we were going to Vanderbilt together and going to be roommates, but he's, you know, signed out of high school and all that kind of stuff. So um, we have some familiarity with one another. And, um, you know, if there's anyone to – to be able to man first base, uh, other than Freddie, it would be him. But then also the part of you is, is disappointed and uh, frustrated that uh, Freddie's not going to be here anymore. Um, you know, we were we were good friends, obviously, and uh, really enjoyed our time together. You know, in the clubhouse, and uh, it's just one of those things like you know it's, you always know it's a possibility um, going into an off season, but when it happens, it's just kind of one of those things where it still like hits home a little bit. Um, because at the end of the day, too, like this is business. That's, that's a great spot right there. Danzy Swanson summed it up great. Go and watch that video courtesy of Bally Sports South. When we come back, we're going to talk about the auxiliary moves, the secondary moves the Braves have made. Colin McHugh, Barry College graduate, my man, the Barry Viking, and uh, Super Rosario is back at Truist. <laughs> Cook's Place began serving our signature hot dogs in 1985 from a cart on Broadway. We still serve the best hot dogs and scrambled dogs in town at the corner of Moon and Miller Road and at the landings. Our friendly staff won't let you leave hungry. Come in and eat to the beat with our 50s jukebox. Cook's Place, fast service, great people, awesome food. What are you waiting for? Back here on the crowded booth, if you're watching over on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. We're at uh, 200 and almost 20 subscribers. Hey, we're growing. And most importantly, Ralph, we do this not for money, that's for sure. But we also do it because we have fun. Would you say that you have fun on this show, Ralph? There are some days where I think back and look at our old shows, and I laugh a lot. And there's some yeah. days where I'm frustrated because of the things we talk about. We have to talk yeah. about, like, I remember, I think after the World Series, we had the conversation, will Freddie be a brave again? And I, I remember saying, there's no doubt in my mind that Freddie will be like in the way of Braves. And I ate my own words. So mm -hmm. those days, I don't really have fun. But today, I mean, right now, we've had, we've had some fun lately. We've been having some fun lately for sure. Hit the subscribe button and also check out a plethora of different options. We've got some variety on the channel. We're also going to be launching a new kind of um, new kind of show that is going to be under the crowded booth umbrella we've got the georgia tech talk i know a lot of our subscribers are there for that we're going to be releasing with the spring game coming out and the spring game happening today as well uh that's going to be a ton of fun ralph let's talk quickly about this the signings okay the signings that alex and has made so obviously we talked about the extension let's first off start off with colin McHugh. Now, ralph they bring in colin McHugh. i was just on the phone with a good friend of ours jake jones he said bryce i knew colin was good i didn't know he had elite stuff and i didn't know that he was that good uh, ralph this is a big signing a right-handed arm out of the bullpen the bullpen looks nasty now for the braves which it's crazy around nine months ago ten months ago everyone was freaking out about it and now that group looks pretty formidable Kirby Yates earlier in the offseason. He's not going to be in a pressure type of situation coming off of Tommy John surgery because we've got enough high leverage arms. But McHugh, and you talked about this, he can be the long reliever. But Ralph, there's been plenty of times he's gone two or three innings and covered and even gotten a save. He has that kind of stuff, some filthy stuff out of the right-hander. Who I'll also say is a Lilburn, Georgia native, as is Matt Olson. Yeah. So, you know, you know uh, not only is a, a you know, building a – dynasty roster over here. He's also building a Georgia style roster and a Southeast yeah. style roster. Um, Call me Q, man. He, he's crazy good. And I say that in the way is that he doesn't have to throw hundred miles an hour, be the reliever. Mm -hmm. He has great stuff. He's 34. 
Uh, Braves get him what for three years, I think. Three years two, or two year, two year, ten million dollar deal. So it's it's exactly. it's not you're not even it's not that uh, bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, and for a guy who pitched in thirty seven games last year, Bryce, a, a relief pitcher now mm-hmm. had an ERA of one point five five. Yeah, that's crazy good. That's that's, that's outstanding for a signing of, of his caliber. Um, it just brings you know, especially with days like when the playoffs, the playoffs come around, yeah. you bring in a pitcher who is. Um, who can, who can be that day that uh, that game four starter or day game five starter and be that bullpen arm? He can throw four to five innings and be fine. Mm-hmm. He's pit, he's started before. He can go long. He can go distance if you need to. And and even if like a starter has a bad game in a playoff game, we're getting blown out. Throw him out there. Yeah, let him burn some innings and stuff. So I think this this thing is a huge one for the Atlanta. It, like you said, it helps Kirby Yates. It helps Tyler Matzik. He hit it. You know, Matzik had a load in the playoffs this past mm-hmm. year. He a lot. So this this helps out Luke Jackson also is that other that really dominant right handed arm we had in the bullpen only so you know this this helps the bullpen you know tremendously I think AA had a, a great guy to pick up too. Yeah, Callum Q pitched for the Rays, and Ralph, one thing that he did with the kind of the Rays' funky uh, rotation they do, he would be the opener. He also has that starting experience that you alluded mm-hmm. to, and I think this is a great sign. He gets to come back home. He had told his family he always wanted a chance to come back and play for the Atlanta Braves, and this is another high-leverage arm. Atlanta is stockpiling that as well, and I think, Ralph, that's just the biggest thing for me. When you look at what this team's done, uh, they are good. They are really, really good, and they've got a lot of good pieces um, we talked about the addition there, Kirby Yates, obviously. And I think yeah, I saw today where they were talking about, um, even with some of the moves, we're going to get to that in a second, that they made. This is still a roster and a pitching staff that is one of the best, I think, in baseball. But it always helps, Ralph, and I'll tell you this, it always helps when you can add a guy like Eddie Rosario back, the NLCS MVP. Ralph, talk to me. I know you're excited. Tell me, how excited are you to be able to see Eddie Rosario back in an Atlanta Braves uniform? Build the statue for him already. I mean, the NLCS MVP, the man who got us to the World Series and continued the rake throughout the whole playoffs. And a guy who, you know, beginning when we, we traded for him, you know, we traded Pablo Sandoval and we got cash back for him. You know, this was a – no one thought anything of Rosario. I thought he'd just be a, a off the bench bat for the Braves and – Man, he turned it around about mid mid August, late September, mm-hmm. or about early September, and you know became that you know guy who could start for the Braves, be that seventh eighth spot hole in the hole, and then, you know lo and lo and behold, here comes the playoffs, and he just says, "I'm here to lead us yeah. to the World Series," and went yeah. nuts. He went like a, what eleven for fifteen in the playoffs against the Dodgers in that series. I mean, oh, unbelievable! And the, obviously, the clutch yeah. three run homer in Game Six to win the yeah. to win the game. Yeah, and, and go back to Game Four, I believe, when he had he was a double away from the cycle and said, "Nah, I'd rather hit two home runs instead." And so, you know, bring him back, build the statue for him now. This is a great re-signing for the mm-hmm. Braves. It it brings back a guy that a fan favorite too. Um, and that lineup now is just it's ridiculous how great. Mm-hmm. You get to about early June, Bryce, when when Ronald King shows back up and he's back on the team. This team's going to be not just you know playoff worthy. I'm thinking they're World Series contenders once again. Uh, they are right now, but once Acuna, like I said, once Acuna gets fully healthy back, he's already healthy. You get to the video of Ronald Acuna hitting a home run and saying, looking back at the camera and says, "I'm back." That shows you right now he's he's a thousand percent ready to go. This team is one thousand percent chance of winning. Or they're a thousand percent a World Series contender again. Oh, they no doubt are. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. But I think Eddie Rosario brings that uh, locker room presence, too, that they needed. Obviously, a veteran guy like Rosario, they get him for two years, $18 million. Ralph, that's very affordable. There's also some money still left to be over there looking for a back-end starter type of guy, an innings eater they could throw back there to help out some of the younger arms and kind of that big three of Morton. Uh, we'll see if he's ready for opening day, kind of around that time, Freed and Anderson. Um you have Mike Soroka, who's not going to be pushed at all to try to come back in a hurry. You have guys like Kyle Wright that I'm excited to see how he builds off of his World Series performance. Tucker Davidson, Kyle Muller, Hawaskari Noah. I mean, there's a lot of impressive arms that the Braves can run out there. We're going to talk about, though, why all of this happening has me, and I think Ralph, feeling pretty good about where this team is headed for the next decade or so here on the Crowded Booth. <laughs> Your soap is... 
Ugh. And your body wash is a synthetic detergent. But you're not a dish. You're a man. Switch to Dr. Squatch Natural Soap for Men. For men who build things. Open pickle jars on the first try. Slay dragons. And let their daughters braid their hair. Men who like to feel good and smell. Titillating. Dr. Squatch takes you places you never thought you'd go. Naked. Back here on the crowded booth as you're listening to us on the radio or watching over on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. This is the crowded booth. Bryce Coon and Ralph Leary, we've been talking about this Braves team, Ralph. We've been talking a lot about Matt Olson, Eddie Rosario, Colin McHugh, Alex Anthopoulos. But I, and as the title says to today's show, I want to talk about this because I think one of the biggest things about this team and what they've done over the past 48 to 72 hours it's rough. I I really think that this team and this organization is about to go on another run. Now, listen, the run of the 90s is going to be one of those things that's going to be hard to ever match, except for the world championship aspect. 14 straight division titles, that's nuts. It's, it's crazy. But what I'm saying is I think we're about to see another Braves dynasty, and I want to paint this picture for you. By the time this episode drops, Freddie Freeman might have already picked his destination when we drop this on Thursday. But the thing is, is that what's interesting to me is the Braves – and heck, we might drop this thing on Wednesday. I'm not quite sure. We might do that just because we can. <laughs> if Freddie Freeman doesn't sign with the Dodgers, Ralph, you tell me another National League team that can compete with the Braves. And, I, and I'm serious about this because they lost Corey Seager. They lost Scherzer. They really didn't replace Seager. Gavin Lux doesn't scare me. Um, Justin Turner is a shell of himself. <laughs> I mean, and seriously, Cody Bellinger's not very consistent. Just for L.A.'s sake, it's not the Dodgers. And I think we're starting to see the pendulum switch to now where the Braves truly, Ralph, are going to be the powerhouse in the National League for good reason, the defending World Series champs, defending National League champs, defending NLEs champs. I don't care what in the world, Sporta or whatever this ranking system that's going to put out this thing, the Braves are going to finish fourth in the East. I love it. They've got the best roster in – Baseball. Now, I know last year we said, well, that doesn't mean anything. The Dodgers got the best roster. But this Braves team, they extended their championship window. And I really believe there could be and we could see another dynasty in Atlanta because you've got a core group of players, Ralph, that are locked up for a good five, six years all together now. You mentioned Acuna, Albies, and Olsen are making $35 million combined this year. That's less than Max Scherzer. The Mets, and I'm just going to run through this. The Mets, yeah, they've probably got the best one-two punch, Ralph, in between Scherzer and DeGrom. That's a nasty one-two punch. But Charlie and Freed are stupid good. I think people have gotten ahead of themselves when they forgot that Charlie Morton and Max Freed are just that good in what they did in the playoffs. But where else do you go? Pete Alonzo, yeah, he can hit home runs and get the ball far. Mm. Jeff McNeil, I'm taking Ozzie Albies. Shortstop, Francisco Lindor, unless he goes back to his way of the Cleveland Indians, no, not the Guardians, the Indians, Dansby Swanson is shown to be a clutch performer in the playoffs. Austin Riley, ask who is J.D. Davis. We don't even know who that is. You know, there's there's just things about this roster that you're also – I had someone text me, this roster's good, and we also – I talked about this on our previous episode. Ronald Acuna Jr., Ralph, outside of Mike Trout, put him in a different stratosphere. Ronald Acuna Jr. is probably the best player in baseball outside of Mike Trout. He's coming back. He's coming back. Marcelo Zuna, whether you – you know, however you feel about the guy's personal choices or not, if he just comes back and bats 260 and hits 25 homers, oh, fantastic. This this roster is legitimately built, Ralph, to be a dynasty over the next decade, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm here for it. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I mean, you hit it on around the spot. I mean, it's perfect. I talked way too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're, you're completely fine. <laughs> I, I want to add one thing to it is, yeah, the Mets – Pitching stats are good. He got, you know, Jacob DeGrom, the best pitcher in baseball. Mm. Max Scherz, one of the greatest pitchers we've ever Chris seen. Chris Bassett. Mm-hmm. That's that's great, though. But that's great. Good are, for them. Is that, is that your only two starters you got? You they got Chris have, Bassett. But he's I'm taking Ian great. Anderson. No, he's a starter. Chris so Bassett. Oh, well, Ian Anderson, who's 20, 24 years old and will dice you up any day of the week. Mm-hmm. He took the Astros five innings of no-hit baseball. Ian Anderson is before his time and still is learning how to get better. Yeah. He's worked with Charlie Morton already. Just he, he learned so much from him already. He's going to learn more and more every day. I mean, Josh Tomlin's going to work with him, I'm sure. You know, a lot of these guys are going to learn. Let's see these young kids like Soroka not pushing him back. When he's back and he's fully healthy, good luck, New York. This is, he, he's ready to come back and he's ready 
start slinging it. I know my dad's a big doubter on Mike Sorkin. He hasn't pitched in eight years, it feels like. Mm-hmm. Still, this roster is built so well right now, so well-rounded. It, it's not lopsided like we have in the past, where it, it's a dominant pitching staff, but the, the lineup's kind of weak, or dominant, the lineup's strong, the bullpen's mm-hmm. kind of weak. I feel like it's well-rounded. The bullpen is, I mean, if not, it's playoff caliber like it was last year. Yeah. I mean, there's almost, almost shut down, basically. Yeah. And you got these teams like New York and LA who are paying these guys just stupid mm-hmm. amounts of money. Do you realize that we haven't extended any of these people in our bullpen yet? Like, obviously, Will Smith's on his last year's contract. Okay, take him yeah. out of the picture. Tyler Madsen, AJ Minner, Luke Jackson have not signed contracts yet. They're yeah. still in arbitration. We have not overpaid one person in our team, to, in my opinion. We're yeah. not paying someone $43 million a year. We don't yeah. have to. We have guys who are young enough, and we develop so much better. I mean, New York, I'll, I'll, the last person New York has developed well enough, and still on the team, is DeGrom. Honestly. Mm-hmm. That's the last developed player they have on the roster that's done anything. No Senegar, gone. So, yeah. I mean, th- this this New York roster, the, the Mets roster, and I've read on Twitter uh, under a tweet, when the Braves signed Matt Olson, the trade for Matt Olson, I read a comment from a Mets fan said, poverty organization. I don't see how you call us a poverty organization when you finish third best in the National League East when you were supposed to win it all. Uh, mm-hmm. You celebrate, you practice celebrating for the World Series when you watch us win it in, in November. So, yeah. Just remember, you know, when you're talking trash about a team that just won the World Series, that, you know, when you're paying stupid amounts of money for a pitcher who's, what, 37 years old? Yeah. I, I just have a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot to say about these teams. Like even the Padres. The Padres probably be the, the probably the best team of them. The West. Yeah. I mean, the Giants had a great year last year, but it was one of those just magical runs. Mm-hmm. But this year, I think the Padres have it over to the Dodgers. If Tatis ever figures out how to stay healthy for longer than a week. Stays off his motorcycle. That was what's interesting too, Ralph, about that. And that's a whole side note is uh, the Padres were not reportedly not going to void the contract. They had every right to because of how he, uh, the antics that he had with the motorcycle accident and everything. But going back to this, it's, yeah, there's a part of the fandom that comes into it. But when we, we try right. to take a step back, and obviously you see it right here, i got the pullover on, and I, I'm a Braves fan, but there's no way that you're gonna, not going to tell me that when you look at this roster on paper, I know you got to play the games, and us Braves fans are saying, let us play the games. But Ralph, Alex Anthopoulos inherited a team that lost 90-plus games, okay? He's improved every single year on where they finished. Seriously, he has. And this team... I mean, the Nationals aren't doing anything, really, realistically. They're not going to do they're, anything. They're losing their best player next year. Yes. Juan Soto's gone next year. So they're so they're going to – so, yeah, they're not doing anything. The Marlins, Derek Jeter left because they wouldn't do anything. The now, Mets I'll are the Mets. The, and the Marlins, the Marlins got a good pitching. They yeah. got good pitching, but they That's don't have the offense. No. The Phillies are weird. I mean, they signed Kyle Schwarber, but it's just like you just ne- – the Phillies' bullpen has constantly let them down in their pitching staff. Outside I mean, of Zach Wheeler and Nola. Yeah. So when you look at the East, the Braves are the clear cut favorite there. You look in the Central, nobody scares me out of the Central. Honest. I mean, the Brewers are good, but we already showed we beat their best guys in a series last year. And then the West, you talked about, you have essentially a team that was like the Braves, I would say, three years ago in San Diego that's got their young guy and then a veteran. The young guy being kind of Tatis, their veteran Machado. That's a lot how the Braves were, Acuna with uh, Freeman. Mm-hmm. But they still got to go through some things. This Braves team is young but experienced, and that combination is huge. Ralph, we got to wrap up here. This has been the crowded booth. It's a ton of fun talking about all this stuff. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. This is the first time where we've had to cut the show almost a little bit short. This is the crowded booth. Follow us on social media. Let us know anything else you want to know on the show. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the Braves, Matt Ryan, and the Falcons as well. This has been the crowded booth. How in here and make yourself feel at home. Coming on the crowded booth with Bryce.